So this week, um, I'm I got my Catholic hippo though. You got the. I told you about the Catholic school hippo, right? Yes, you did. Yeah. So we've got the Irish Catholic hippo. Very important. I'm somehow that sacrilege. I don't know how. Oh, we heard on This American Life this week. There is a story about hippo. About what? how at the turn of the century, we almost destroyed our ecology. And we hadn't, you know, we had no place for cow to graze and whatnot. So they thought, we'll solve this problem by importing hippos to eat. To eat. To eat. Like for people to eat? For people to eat. <sighs> That's barbaric. There's this this one uh, guy, This I think he was a senator trying to get it. He would like offer people hippo jerky. The reporters in his office, he would like give them hippo jerky. Oh my god, I just had the best thought. Huh. So, you watch Game of Thrones, obviously. Yes. Can you imagine, instead of horse people, if the Dothraki were, like, hippo people? How motherfucking badass would that shit be? If you were, like, Khal Drogo, and you had a giant stampede of hippos with, like, warriors riding on them, that shit would be fucking hardcore. It's always hippos with you. It's always hippos. I'm going to be the next George R. R. Martin. I'm going to write Game of Hippos. We're working on the title. Hypocrisy. H-I-P-P-O-C-R-A-C-Y. Tell a friend. So, this week we've They're got... They're saying I look very pink. I'm sorry. It's better than when I used to be blue. So this week we've got uh, pretty much uh, just a collection of random crazy. These are things that people had a choice. People had a choice. That's the point this week. People had a choice and they made the wrong one. Boy, did they make the wrong one. Uh, so let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And hey, the first one's from England. <laughs> So yay, so yeah, represent hometown. Um, so, what's the gang sign for England? I guess E. I I don't know. So we last week remember we had the lady who complained that the crack wasn't crack, and she called the police. Yeah, she took the crack challenge and it didn't work out. All right, I guess the the thing the the, the question to ask is. What if she was wearing a fedora? Check the link. Man complains to counsel after a prostitute turns him down. Oh. <laughs> the uh, gentleman seemed very aggrieved. Well, that's genteel. Oh, the Brit. The unnamed man sent an angry email to the trading standards officer after he was turned down by an Eastern Euro European woman at a brothel in the area. Of course, the council said the gentleman was very aggrieved. I, I the man had. The gentleman was very aggrieved that she would not let him give her a good rogering. I apologize, cat. My British accent is really bad. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I'm crap at accents. They'll tell you. I have a little Cajun hippo and I try and do a Cajun accent. They get so mad at me. I wonder if he included in the letter that he was a nice guy. I even offered to pay her. I even offered to tip. <laughs> Prostitutes just want assholes who don't tip. <laughs> Counselor Susan Hall said, Prostitution may be the only profession in the world, but a complaint of this sort is a new one on us. The trading standards manual doesn't really cover it. The man said he had traveled from a neighboring borough in North London, so was obviously a bit upset by his wasted trip. Don't you hate it when you drive all the fucking way across town to get a blowjob in your car and you can't even get a blowjob in your car? Don't you hate that? That's like half a gallon of gas that, you know, you could have just not wasted and sat home and jerked off to porn like everybody else. 
He just takes it and runs with it. Just like heads for the fucking end zone. You can't fucking stop her. Everybody's going, like, I'm open! And he just, no, he just kept going. Just keep going. I would like, like the gentleman involved to visit Harrow again, but perhaps this time he could enjoy some of our more, more wholesome pursuits. Like our wonderful open parks, leisure centers, and historic churches. That sounds like she's giving him suggestions for where to bring a prostitute. <laughs> a leisure center. <laughs> and this, she's just so polite about it, you know? Just like, well, let's turn it around. Let's yeah. let's, let's make it something, you know. Let's talk about all the great tourism. Forget the, forget the hookers. Let's just turn it around here. Yeah. Come visit our local parks. Oh, uh, so um A for effort. Wow, these these mugshots. Oh god, I'm gonna send you the link. I I I don't have a segue here because I don't think there is really anything that could segue into this. But I like that since we switched to Google, you can hear my custom lost I am sound. So, uh, yeah, this is not. Apparently, I found that this is interesting. This can cause cows to give less milk, which was how he discovered this was happening. I'm not making this up. Farmer sets up camera to bust upstate New Yorkers making porn with his cows. Again, someone had a choice here. And the right choice is obviously not to fuck someone's cows. You'd think you wouldn't have to tell people that. If you have the two options, you have A, fuck someone's cows, and B, not fuck someone's cows, it's a B I mean, choice. The world is full of fishes. People are into some shit. We always say it. I'm not here to judge you. You do you. Have fun as long as everybody's consenting and everybody's having a good time. You know, if you're into regurgitated jello and popping balloons with your thighs, great. Don't fuck animals. <clears throat> yeah, because they don't want you to. There's don't no animal animals. that they, they don't want you to. No. They're not giving you bedroom eyes, especially the cows. And I'm here to tell you that cow, not impressed with your with your dick. No. Uh, two upstate New Yorkers. She's seen bigger. <laughs> I love that the guy who wrote this, Lee Moran. Actually, he had to editorialize a little bit. Two upstate New Yorkers have been caught making sick animal porn movies with a herd of cows. I mean, the, the reporter's like, fuck it, this guy's a sicko. Uh, Is my, there a market for that? Michael Jones, 35, allegedly did the dirty deed with the bovine beast in Herkimer County, while best pal Reed Fontaine, 31, Film the entire sordid encounters. Okay, I want to know what kind of friendship they have. That, hey, yeah. hey, Reed. Yeah, Mike. Hey, Reed, I'm. I I need you to do me a favor. What's that, Mike? I'm I'm going to this farm in upstate New York, and I'm gonna fuck this guy's cows. And normally that's where the conversation would end, but no, apparently this stayed past that. He's like, I'm gonna fuck his cows. And I want to make some money off this. Can you film me? And he's like, sure. Every time you ask me that, I'm like, dude, still, no. And they were busted, however, when the farmer started to wonder why his animals weren't producing as much milk as possible. He set up surveillance ca cameras and soon discovered the pair were making out with this cow. So apparently molesting cows makes them give less milk. Obviously. Because I would disturb the fuck out of me, too. You know I mean? You're already, all right, already your life is someone's hooking up suction cups to your nipples every fucking morning. So already you got a bad go of it. That does seem unpleasant. I actually saw, when I went to Ireland, cows hooked up to milking machines, and it really looks unpleasant. It's chok, 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 chok. they do that to chicks in porn, so maybe they like it. Who knows? Maybe there are some kinky cows. You already have to deal with that. But on top of that, you have these two talking monkeys pop up every night at midnight and do things to you that you don't want them to if you had opposable thumbs. 
Yeah, okay. I fuck fuck this milk shit. I'm hey. done. It's called interspecies erotica, fucko. <laughs> we have to use that one every time, don't we? We have we've had to use it way too much. Yeah. We should know. not be able to use it so much. There's some material that we should not be able to go to. There are some wells we don't want to go to as often as we do. We wish they would give less milk, but they just keep squirting. So I brought Kat over here for a week. We're in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm like, oh, you love it here. It's Hi, pretty. Kat. It's great. It's one of the small circles of civilization in the South. And as I say this to her, we got this story tonight. South Carolina boy swallows dart after accepting YouTube challenge. Charleston County, WCSC, that's my local news station. From the cinnamon challenge to eating a cactus to other dangerous dares, antics all over YouTube enticing many young kids like Sean Stillinger to say challenge accepted to a homemade blow dart experiment. I tilted it up to shoot it out at a tree and it fell back down the straw that I had it in and it went into my throat, said 15 year old Sean. He showed off the blow dart that was once lodged in his windpipe. Look at that fucking thing. I mean, it just, it, which way is it? It's over here. What look look at that fucking thing. What exactly was the challenge? I don't know. I, I'm trying to read is the there story. Some kind of blow dart challenge? Yeah, I, I'm trying to see what in the story. There's, there's just, I... Funny story, if you've ever seen the movie Balls of Fury, which I don't recommend, because it's a terrible movie about ping pong of all things, that's how Aisha Tyler's character dies. Spoiler! Inhaling it's really a, a blow dart. Not a terribly important plot point. I, it's, okay. If you give me a straw and these homemade, it looks like he made these from shoelace eyelets. Where With a... is your mom? Because <laughs> I'm here to tell you, I now live with an eight-year-old, my eight-year-old nephew, who's a very precocious, lovely little boy. And I'm here to tell you, if he was making fucking blow darts, somebody would notice. Like, he's pretty well monitored. Sean, what are you doing? Nothing. Playing. <sighs> somebody would be aware that he was making blow darts and put a stop to it. Hey, that's a bad idea. You could puncture your... Oh, my... Esophagus. Oh, my God. There's a... Oh, my God. There's a bigger... Oh, we've got to show you the bigger picture. There's a blow-up picture of it. Oh, my God. This is the x-ray. Look at that! Holy oh, shit! Oh, shit. What was... I, I still want to know... Like, I know the cinnamon challenge... Yeah, you eat a spoonful of cinnamon. Right, and nobody even, can do it or something. They even got Arya Stark from I Game know, of Thrones did that. Kid. Why would you do that? You're a Stark. But yeah, look well, at that. That When you're a Stark, what have you got to lose? Yeah. Now, I okay. would like to think this is one of those incidents in life that would make you stop and go... I should rethink my choices. But I just you go, hmm. But I just know if we're still doing this in 10 years. Oh God. Sean's gonna be back. If we're still doing this in 10 years, we are gonna be the grumpiest motherfuckers on the internet. I'm already the grumpiest motherfucker. We're already yeah. grumpy old people. Back in my day. Yeah. We didn't even have the internet. We had to go to the library to write a report. We're doing this. It's in 10 true. Years. It's, it's going to be bad. Remember the card catalog? Remember the fucking card catalog? The Dewey Decimal System? Yeah. And try the saddest it. Thing, the saddest thing happened at my job last week. I think We're Alone Now by Tiffany is in our music mix, which makes me so happy. And it came on, and I was like, oh my God, Tiffany's on, blah, blah, blah. And the girl I work with, who's 21 and very, very sweet, goes, who's Tiffany? Yeah. And I was like, if you'll excuse me, I've got to take my Centrum Silver and watch Matlock now. 
Speaking of high school, and I'm stretching this one to get my segue here. Did you have, I know we had in my high school, we had the vending machines for lunch. They offered you a lunch you could go buy or the vending machines. It was supposedly a nutritious lunch or the vending machines. And what would you all, what did we all do? I went and got Doritos and a candy bar. I never took, I never took lunch in high school because I went to school in the hood. And there was always some gigantic, horrendous fight. So I never took lunch. I skipped. I got like a note and took an extra art class and just had my friends smuggle me snacks during the day. I, I would not have survived that cafeteria. Well, I had a different experience. I had the, the vending machines. And it was those old style coil vending machines. Oh. And if you ever got something stuck in there, it will piss you off. Because it's just, it's like, it's right there. And you try and shake the machine just a little to get it out. This and guy it just taunts you. Well, this guy took matters a little. He tried to get it with a forklift. I've been waiting all day. I've been waiting all fucking day for that. Worker uses forklift to dislodge Twix bar from vending machine. Loses his job. Milford, Iowa. An Iowa man has lost his job and unemployment benefits for using a forklift to get a candy bar from a malfunctioning vending machine. Uh, according to unemployment records last month, Robert McKevitt, 27, of Spirit Lake, was working at Polaris Industries Warehouse in Milford when the incident occurred last fall. McKevitt wanted some candy, so he deposited a dollar in the vending machine for a 90 cents Twix candy bar. But the candy bar got snagged in the hook and wouldn't fall. He banged it and rocked it, but that didn't work. State records show McKevitt then commandeered a forklift, picked up the machine. This is the part that's amazing. At least six times and dropped it about two feet onto the concrete floor. Three candy bars fell. McDivitt was fired five days later. He told the newspaper he never. I. And he tried to. And this is the guy. He tried to apply for unemployment benefits. No! No, not after that. No, your ass was fired with Duke. You fucker. This is a man that would have benefited from seeing your German forklift safety video. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Then, this, you know. this, this is a man that would have benefited from seeing Klaus accidentally disembowel somebody trying to get a candy bar. I mean, I like Twix, too. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> Six times. It's not like that shit was a Snickers. Because... A Snickers? Okay. Six? Twix? I mean, that doesn't even have any peanuts in it. <laughs> so you have to imagine, after that... Do you remember that scene, Indiana Jones and uh, The Last Crusade with the librarian? And Indiana's trying to break into the X, and the librarian's yeah. making the stamp at the same time. You would have to imagine after six times, someone would pick up on this large fucking noise. There's well, no. If you work in the kind of place where there's a forklift, there's probably loud noises all over the place all the time. <laughs> okay, Arrow Zeppelin, you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my that's god that's why he should have gone for the snickers yeah lionheart not working anywhere for a while grab a snickers yes <laughs> oh my god at least it at least he wasn't one of those people that tipped it over on himself and got hurt or got his hand stuck trying to reach into the fucker you know what? If I if I, if there was a vending machine that was denying me a fucking Pepsi and I had access to a Fort Lift, I cannot promise I would not do the same thing. You do not come between me and my Pepsi. Yeah, that's that's. I kind of get where this guy's coming from. All he wanted was a Twix, just a Twix, and the machine wouldn't give it to him. Well, I, again, and this was a matter of you had the choice to use the forklift or to not use the forklift. And this next one is kind of another one of those obvious choices. You could... 
Well, this one's got video, so you you can see for yourself this guy. Uh, judge for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will give him credit for, you know, trying to DIY it. Struggling bank robber armed with meat cleaver laughed at by teller. And you know what? We got video. I shit you not. Here we go. Um, here it is. No, not that. Not that. There we go. Here he is. Now, he comes up to the counter with a fucking meat cleaver. She obviously gets the fuck out. But the bank teller is behind an inch thick plexiglass. And she's and just still like, isn't as bad as the guy who called ahead his bank robbery. And there's the security guard standing right there looking at him like, really, dude? Fucking really? Fuck no. Give give me the fucking no. Down on get on the get on the ground. On the oh, oh damn. He was man. I don't think that's the security guard. I think it's just a random guy. The security guard's fucking off. <laughs> okay. If you're if you're gonna rob a place that's well populated and has security, you probably don't want to go with a small range melee weapon. You want something with a range attack. Uh, let's see. At some point last week at the China Construction Bank in Shanghai, a man walked in the building talking on a phone. After appearing to pull the fire alarm in an attempt to disrupt business, the man pulled out the meat cleaver and declared he was robbing the bank. The man approached the teller's window with the cleaver and, moving a patron out of the way, brandishing the weapon only to find the teller laughing at the feeble attempt. Safe behind the plexiglass, Robert was quickly subdued by bank security, grabbed him from behind, and quickly slammed the man onto the ground. The security uh, guard... I might have taken him seriously if he had a gun. You never really know if the security glass will stop a bullet, but I knew he had no chance of getting through with a meat cleaver! Although it always works in horror movies. It was a bizarre situation. I, I just mean, you could have a fucking blast door, but if Jason has a machete, he's gonna chop your head off. So you know, you never know. Uh, it, was... it really depends on whether or not that bank teller was a virgin, I guess. <laughs> it was a bizarre situation. I just had a lap, and this is this, is... especially when he took a telephone call in the middle of the robbery. Damn kids and their ADD. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. You gotta stay focused. No, I, no, I, no, I'm doing. Focused on your robbery. Yeah, I'm robbing the bank today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just using the meat cleaver, dude. Yeah, I know, but you know, it's. I, I thought it'd be a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I pulled the fire alarm. Yeah. Oh, hold on, this dude's gonna slam my ass on the ground. Be right back. <laughs> I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. <laughs> Can't pull me out of this right now. <laughs> Oh, dear God. I guess you had the choice here. You could have looked at the situation and gone, nope, this isn't going to work. Or, fuck it, I'm here. Might as well. You got to think, because I like how he pulled the fire alarm, which meant he spent long hours at night plotting and playing. He did like an ocean, his own little Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's One. He probably has like a Lego model of the bank. Yes! Sitting there. Okay, at this point, we pull the fire alarm. Then I take a phone call. Then I pull out the meat cleaver. You gotta take the phone call to look casual. Yeah. So our it's last... Normal. Our last one this week, speaking of not looking normal, and having a... Ch okay, I like that in my hand. Ocean's Eleven brain cells. Nice. Um, so this is obviously, you had a choice to do this or to not do this. And you know what? I've got to hand it to him. This would tempt even me to do this because it is legendary. Probably, maybe not in the way you want to be something to be considered legendary, but it is in fact legendary. Man with flower pot on head wields chainsaw during robbery. Why does he look like Kid Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Pl 
Police rushed to the 7-Eleven service station at Ash Street, Flinders View, call, following calls for help from two terrified shop attendants. It will be the alleged it, it will be alleged the man who was wearing a flower pot on his head in an attempt to conceal his identity. Oh god, there's, there's a close-up view of him. Right, I'm putting that on the big screen. Because that's just precious. Look at that. Look, he's just oh bless his heart. He's trying so hard. It's better than the fish bucket. Remember we had the guy who was robbing a place and put the fish bucket on his head? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, wielding a chainsaw, which was running at the time, the man lunged at store attendants who were trading in the back room. Police alleged the man then used the chainsaw to damage a window and several display racks in the shop before the pace de resistance, exposing his buttocks to the store attendants. He's accused of damaging a parked vehicle upon fleeing the scene. The man made demands for money, but left the store only with a bottle of soft drink and the chainsaw. Important. <laughs> no pun intended. If you're wielding a chainsaw, always keep your pants on. You don't, yeah. you don't want to become accidentally Jewish. <laughs> you don't want to accidentally change your gender. Ah, oh, Jewish on accident. I think we have a title this week. If you're wielding a chainsaw, keep your pants up. And on top of that... They don't put that on the warning label. They should, but they don't. But just, you know, it's one to grow on. You know, after they ran from him, he still has a chainsaw. There's the cash register, but nope. Gonna get myself a mountain. I'm gonna do the do. Is what I, what's gonna happen? I'm I'm gonna do the do. Well, all that chainsaw wielding makes the guy thirsty. <laughs> you know what? If you're robbing a place, you might as well get a soda out of it. He had a choice. Oh. He had a choice here. Yeah, but he chose a better weapon. He chose a much better melee weapon than the meat cleaver guy. He did. He did. He chose a badass weapon. I I have to sit here and think for a moment. If presented with the options, do you rob a store with a flower pot in your head, carrying a chainsaw, or do you not? I mean, maybe you got a proper mask. God damn it, that's tempting. That's tempting. Because you're never going to forget this guy. You never will. In the, your entire life. Everybody watching right now. You're never going to forget him. It's going to be in the back of your head. And someday you're going to see a flower pot or a chainsaw or an ass. And you're going to go, that fucking guy in Australia. This is kind of immortality here. This is, this is kind of, he's kind of an immortal now. Is that the kind of immortality you want? He, he's he's made by way you of his be, ass. He's immortal. Do you want to be flower pot chainsaw ass guy? <laughs> Is that the mark you want to leave on the world? The mark of your ass? <laughs> I mean, if it is, you know, I'm not here to judge you. I guess that's cool. Uh, okay, okay, Lionheart. Nate, Nick Saint Row 4 DLC. Yeah, I'd buy that. I just. <laughs> wasn't Dar there. Wasn't Axel Rose's guitarist a guy named Buckethead for a while? He wore a chicken bucket I'm to not cover sure. his face. I'm not sure. He wore like a KFC bucket on his head with little eye holes cut out. <laughs> the pothead is, rises. Oh, nice. This is what happens when you work with Axl Rose. This is where you end up. People are pointing Unless out... Unless you're the whole rest of Guns N' Roses. They seem okay now because they're Velvet Revolver. Yeah. Us without Axl. People are asking... Creed very... did that too. They fought, Creed fired Scott Stapp and renamed themselves. <clears throat> this is... People in the chat are like, yeah, this guy's... Probably actually doing the Highlander thing really smart. Because Chainsaw beat Sword. Yeah, but that flower pot ain't keeping your head on your shoulders. No. 
Chainsaw beats Ori. So what have we learned this week? We've learned you always have a choice. In life, you always, always, always have a choice. Even if your choice is just meat cleaver, chainsaw. <laughs> We've learned that under certain circumstances, cows will produce less milk. We just didn't want to know what those circumstances were. And now you know. You learned science tonight, kids. You learned science. You learned that if you molest a cow, it won't give as much milk. This is biology. You're getting credit. You tell your professor you're getting credit for my show. You're learning. Put I don't on. think any professor is going to give them credit for learning about bovine porn. Put me on fucking PBS. You're learning. Um. On fucking PBS. Yes. If there's, if there's a station called fucking PBS, then we should definitely be on it. We learned that... I don't think we belong next to Downton Abbey, though. We learned that if you see it on the internet, you it's, don't try it. Don't automatically try it at home. I mean, fuck, we're on the internet. Look at the shit we cover every week. None of you should do any of this. You shouldn't even click these links. Yeah. I post links on Twitter. People still click them. I don't know why. Then they yell at me about it. I'm like, I posted that link. Why are you clicking it? What's wrong with you? You did it to yourself. It's like when I tell people deliberately, do not Google Botfly. And they go and they do it. I don't even link this shit. They do it on their own. So, yeah, we learned that if it involves homemade weapons, you, you should probably not, not do it. I don't know about that. <laughs> Out of That's shoelaces. Kind of, it's kind of a... Well... I, I, I want to know what the blow dart challenge was. Like, were you trying to take down a pet? I don't know. Successfully blow a blow dart. <laughs> That's not... Doesn't seem like much of a challenge, does it? No. Well, it was for this today. guy. But the kids today and their ADD, they can't keep track of much more than that. We learned that candy is good, but there's 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 a line to getting the candy, and that line is the fork. Yeah, because you know, I mean, Homie lost his job. He could have just ponied up another dollar and still had a job. Yeah. I hope were those two extra candy bars really worth it? Were they really? Probably they, not. You know, you're gonna here's what you're gonna get a Twix the next day. You know you are. So just get the two. Take the one you were gonna get tomorrow. Put it in your locker. Ta-da! It's like a free Twix tomorrow. Only right. Free. Right. But you still have a locker tomorrow because you still have a job. And finally, we learned tonight, even prostitutes have standards. So, you know, maybe the maybe that whole nice guy thing, dial it back even when you're paying for it. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Also, and I... shower. I want to know why you know so much about the heartbreak of driving across town for a blowjob that doesn't happen. Do you? Do you? 